Hello everybody, this is Bud. I'm using Windows 10. Take two. All right. Um, so what's what's this about? Well, uh, I I'm on a. It's summer. I'm a I'm a tourist. I'm a, having my vacation in in Windows Windows land. Uh, but I have just uh, made a bootable USB with uh, OpenSUSE tumbleweed. So that's uh, next stop here on on this uh, journey. Will it end there? I don't know. Um, before Windows, I was on Nix for a week. I've been on Windows for, for one week, by the way. <clears throat> and to be honest, hasn't been that bad. Has actually been quite... Felt, it, it, it hasn't felt that bad. And I, I even thought I would stick with Windows. S seriously. <laughs> the thing that made me in the, do this OpenSUSE USB stick thing here now is uh, that I couldn't play Minecraft anymore. I updated, made an update yesterday. One of these classic Windows updates to, took like 20 minutes, two reboots, <laughs> and then everything got slower. It felt like my computer got 10 years older after that upgrade. Wow, what, what an upgrade uh, thing, you know, and, and it, it, <laughs> that really reminded me, you know, this is this is Windows, this is Windows lifestyle, this is what, what you get. And I couldn't play Minecraft anymore. Uh, I could play it before the update, now it's it's like it's like uh, playing Minecraft on, on my, yeah, on a, on a 10 year older computer. It, it, it's, it's simply too slow, even with the lowest resolution. So and and this is the reason. This is really the what what <laughs> what broke the the camel's hair uh, that I couldn't play Minecraft because I, I I remembered since it's only a couple of days ago when it did work and and even then before I made this update on Windows the the last time I, I played Minecraft it it worked okay but it it was much worse than on Linux same version same la launcher much worse. Sure, this is not the official Minecraft la launcher, maybe that's the thing, but it wouldn't surprise me that much, you know, that, that since Minecraft is uh, created by the Swedish game studio Mojang, infamously sold to Microsoft uh, by its owner Notch in, in a <laughs> very uh, quick uh, and hasty deal couple of years ago. Uh, it, that's um, an interesting little story there. It's kind of a sad story also because Notch, um, Notch doesn't seem to be so happy and he, he was such, a, such an inspiration once upon a time. Let's not talk more about that, uh, <laughs> but it is actually the reason here that I cannot play Minecraft. That is what's... Uh, <laughs> It, it shouldn't be like this. It shouldn't be these updates, or should we call them uploads? I don't, because who knows what's going on there when, when the little circle is circling around and it tells you to wait for 20 minutes. When on Arch, you can in, and you have to reboot like two times on Arch or Ubuntu or whatever, you can just update. It takes like one minute and you can use your computer <laughs> while it's doing it, it also updates all your software, not just like, it, it's like if the Linux kernel alone took 20 minutes to update and then you had to reboot also and you could also not just not use the computer while it was updating. It, it doesn't make any sense. It's impossible to, to imagine what it does there, really. Um, so it must do some really wicked, weird things. And, you know, my theory is that it is an upload <laughs> more than it is an update, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's a weird feeling when you've been on Linux for a long while, just that single thing. It's very awkward uh, to experience. Some things are better, like scrolling this window, scrolling the browser here, reading the text in the browser is much more comfortable. Uh, scrolling the window, uh, scrolling text is much more comfortable and 
at least before this update, but even now it feels like my internet is also faster, like pages loads faster, internet loads faster, even when I have like not have my uBlock origin configured and stuff like that, maybe that is why, I don't know, but it feels like internet is faster, which is weird, and the browser works a lot better. Uh, like scrolling and you know it, it, it's about composition really uh, because uh, I, I, I guess it's not that fair to compare my setup where I where I didn't use a compositor at all I, I'm one of those weirdos who, who just don't use like Compton or Picom or anything uh, because <laughs> they don't seem to whatever I don't use them but here that is like built in and it actually makes a, a difference in experience and like an experience I, I had forgot that how, how nice it actually is to, to <laughs> all, I can almost read the text while I'm scrolling it. It's, it's very far from how it was on, on uh, Linux. That's, but that's also details. It's not what, why one would stick to Linux or Windows. It's like, okay, you can either have smooth scrolling working correctly, but you have to have these insane updates that actually makes your computer 10 years older every time you do it, and you probably upload your whole life to some strange Azure server some, somewhere, uh, or whatever, you have no idea what's going on. It, it's also that uncomfortable feeling, you don't, you cannot see what's going on. It's so comfortable, comfort, it's so comfy to see like uh, Pac-Man when you update packages. You see all everything, every single package, every new dependency that it wants and or some recommended dependency and it installed this and when the installation is done, if you're unsure about anything, it's very easy to, to browse the files installed by the different packages and uh, on Arch, it's, it's also no services or anything is enabled by default. Here it was like, I got like three new icons in, in this system tray after that uh, install. Now I have, I think I have removed them. I also noticed here that some settings like was enabled that I know I had disabled before. Uh, because before this recording, I had to try to raise the volume of the microphone which was a, like an insane process you can see here I have, I have both control panel and this settings window because the, the microphone you adjust it this is the control panel start page you go here to hardware and sound sound recording and then properties levels this this is where you adjust the, the sound levels in this old Windows 7 control panel Cannot do it here from this new Windows 10 <laughs> control panel, whatever. At least I couldn't figure out how to do it. Because here, if you search for, for microphone, you get this instead. Microphone privacy settings. And here you can see like applications that have uh, access to my microphone. These guys, I know I disabled this and I don't even use any Xbox game bar thing here. I know I disabled these. They were enabled again after the update, and I just realized this by, by chance here when I was trying to figure out how to change the levels of, of the microphone. And this is just one thing, you know, who knows what else it has been enabled again, or new options, or and hidden stuff, or whatever. It's like, uh, this operating system is not on, on my side, and it's not on your side either and it's I, I i don't know why anyone would use this really well you get nice font yeah if, if you just like that's one thing but then also you get like worse gaming and i think this this will just continue here this is one example here my, my minecraft my anecdotal experience of that but I think gaming on Minecraft, it, it, we have already seen it here, just, just the last year with, with um, what's it called, uh, Steam, Steam Decks, um, stuff like that, you know, gaming on Linux will, will be on par uh, quite soon. But not all games, no, no, probably not all games, there will be like Photoshop uh, situation things where it just simply don't jam with licenses and stuff like that and some games will just never work and some old games will no one will bother porting them 
perfectly, but most new games, I would assume, will, will be uh, available, and it might be like a mass exodus if that, that hasn't happened already, because I heard many reports about like new AAA games actually working better on Linux. And you can set up a Linux session. I, I saw this because, um, as you can see, I have a couple of tabs here. I have this SUSE, then we have some XFCE, then we have some Geeks, and then we have some Nix. This is what we're going to talk about, my little journey here. Because this was what I was doing before Windows. I was on Nix for, for about 10 days or something. Uh, and I am... <laughs> there's so much... Nix is, is uh, kind of a fun rabbit hole to uh, dive into. I highly recommend highly recommend everyone uh, who hasn't tried this distribution do it for do it like me for, for 10 days. I decided that this is not uh, what I want to do uh, now. Th there are some problems with the distribution but there are also so many cool things and it kind of op opens your mind a bit uh, about like stuff you can do. <laughs> Uh, and there, I saw one, one guy who had set up like uh, Steam as a desktop manager with Nix. So, uh, and you could do that with other distributions as well. So it doesn't start. So like, you could quite easily set Linux up like that. You log in with your Lite DM or whatever, but then you choose like Steam as the login manager. I, I would guess that is something. Something like that must be done on the Steam Deck, I guess. Um, so that uh, no other GUI applications or anything, you can get a very lightweight only starting your game. So, and you could even set it up to only start a specific game if you don't use Steam and stuff like that. And that kind of makes Linux much better for gaming. If everything works, you know, if, if the games are, are supported more or less, which they are now with the Proton layers and stuff. And if you can also easily disable the rest of the system, like start in a system where it's not even started, it just immediately starts into the game. Just that little thing makes a big difference for, for, for hardcore gamers, so you can make sure that, that your game uses as much uh, juice as possible, you know. Uh, and I think th we are just at the, at the beginning of this. The, the gamer exodus to Linux is it's such an unexpected. I never thought that would happen. Really, never. But, but now I do. I do think, and it, it kind of clicked for me today with this Minecraft experience, because it was it, it is so slow right now on on Windows here. The rest of the system seems to work fine, but Minecraft no. Um, so that's what makes me go to SUSE here now, and I don't want, I don't want, I really don't want to trash talk Nix at all because Nix is, is, as I mentioned, a very cool thing, uh, or it is many cool things, uh, but some things are maybe not that cool and a bit of a legacy burden for the whole project. To be honest, it's an old Nix is very old. Nix is twenty years old. Some people might think that this is a new system. Just a couple of years ago, everyone started talking about it. And I have tried to figure out why. I haven't found uh, any sort of answer to that. Why it all of a sudden became like extremely popular uh, like four or five years ago, or ex compared to what it was before. It was a very small, uh, but very active group of, it was almost like everyone who was using Nix was kind of part of, of the, developing it in a way. Because it was it was quite small, the, the, the whole user group. But then all of a sudden it just exploded and now they have the largest package repository of all Linux distributions with over 80,000 packages in the official repositories. Um, and that created some problems, I, I believe, for them. They weren't prepared for that, and who, who could be be uh, prepared for, for like an, uh, 20 times more users in, in a year? And, and it is still rising, you know, more, more and more people discover it, like me. I, I tried it out for the first time, like just last week. Um, 
And I, I really don't re regret it. I think uh, Nixos, or not Nixos, but Nix, uh, the package manager, and the Nix shell, I believe, can be installed on top of any distribution, basically. And I think it even works on Mac. You can install Nix on Mac, and you can install it on Windows subsystem Linux thing as well. I haven't tried it here, but it's supposed to work there as well. Um, and let's not talk too much about it, but it's like an alternative package manager. So, so you can install packages with that, but that's not what's cool. What's cool is this Nix shell. That may, it, it, it's a very cool technology. Nix flakes can also be like groundbreaking technology that will kind of just blow a flat pack and snaps and that stuff out of the water. Very, it, it's very possible. I think Nix, Nix has momentum, but it also <laughs> have baggage so to speak so so um, uh, they are in a very uh, interesting uh, uh, position I, I really hope they can pull through because this, this they have great technology they have a great community have great um, very transparent and and cool people working on this um, I really like a lot about it and and also like you can also see you, you cannot have missed like all the Nix hype or what to call it, you know. There are so many blogs that are just 100% dedicated to Nix and you can see how enthusiastic uh, people, users of Nix uh, seems to be. Uh, and it is one of those things, I think, that clicks with some people, it just, yes, this is it. it it's like Vim or Emacs also is for some, some people, they just like Bim, 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 nix, 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 Emacs, 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 you kind of know. But I think this is, <laughs> Emacs and Vim are, are in a way, um, they are just text editors. This this is something completely different. It's, 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 it's a cool thing, but it has some issues now that I really hope they, they will overcome it. Here it says over 60,000 packages, but if we go here, it's a... 8,000 or now we ended up on github This is the package repositories. It's just here on github, which is really cool if you compare this to arch uh, Entangled uh, which is not like uh, Shouldn't bash arch too much about that because it's it's like legacy they, it, their package repository started before there even was git, you know, so But so did Nix in a way since it started in 2003, but whatever uh, everything is is open here on on github but here you might see some hints here 3900 open pull requests over 5000 open issues just those numbers it, it tells some kind of of, of story uh, but there there are great people uh, working on this all all of this stuff um, and i i really think and i hope they they will um, just keep on growing and getting better, but I don't think it is for me, really. I don't want to get, go too much into it, and it's also uh, Nix. A lot of it circulates around Nix, the programming language, uh, because it have its own programming language, which is what you use to to like configure everything. You use this programming language, which is called Nix. Uh, and that's a functional programming language and and the, you can kind of see a connection there between the the Those who get really hooked on Nix. They often come from a Haskell background or something like that um, I have for, for me functional programming is uh, I'm very new to that uh, um, I never really yeah, I did that didn't click for me either uh, has never really done that either but you know that that's what I'm trying to say here in a way but I wish them all the best and I think we, we are not uh, we will see more Nix uh, in other distributions as I mentioned there with Nix flakes and, and Nix shell that is technologies that is extremely usable in any environment uh, where you can enable it and it appears that you can use it in almost any environment and it, it's like great for desktop great for servers great on on like Mac to, as an escape patch to, to be able to install because it looks to be kind of uh, <laughs> iffy to install 
install Linux software on, on Macs, even if it is kind of possible. They have their homebrew uh, package manager, which seems to be really slow and stuff. All of that, you kind of circumvent that with, with Nix if you want to, but you can also use it for creating like sandbox uh, development environments uh, and have like any number of, of different versions of dependencies building same package with it. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with this and you can it, it's very cool, but I I feel that I it, it's not what I want to do uh, right now at least. I looked at Geeks. I talked to the Geeks people. Geeks is extremely cool as well, but I never I haven't tried it, and I think I will try that as well. I think the problem is I I am I should wait with this distro hopping, or I should have waited. Because what this, uh, the reason I, I switched from Nix, I don't know why I didn't say it. The real reason was I got everything set up. i3, my i3s set up, my systemd set up, my XFC panel, Sublime, everything. I got everything set up. Like I had my exact setup, really. <laughs> it it took, took a couple of days, uh, but I got it working, everything. But the XFCE, they don't have XFCE 4.17 packages. You have to use the XFCE 4.16. That was released on December 22, 2020. So those packages are like two years old. And I have gotten used to 4.17 packages or and sometimes even more bleeding edge. But at least 4.17, I really want those packages. It's, it's, you know how it is with technology. If you get something, if you get like a, if you have if you have a 17 inch screen and then you get a 19 inch screen, then you can you simply cannot go back to that 17 inch screen. It it will always feel small. It's the same thing with like XFC 417, 416 in a way. Yep, I think you understand what I mean. And there were no official packages of all these 80,000, 60,000 Nix packages. Um, 4.17 XFCE, no go. Uh, then I have to compile and create my own packages and stuff. And I, I just felt, man, does this rise never end here? I had spent so much time. And then I realized, man, th this will be almost just as much work here. I have to in now get into like, it's also quite complicated packages to create like a desktop environment package suit as the. F the I just, ah, I'm so tired of this. That's why I installed Lin uh, Windows here. I just, maybe I should just install Windows. And then I just did it on a whim, kind of. And at first it felt okay. I, I, I thought maybe I should just stick to this and try to do some serious stuff, you know. I looked up what was new in uh, .NET. I took some uh, Windows, uh, this, this. Took some Windows um, Learn, which is a quite cool uh, Microsoft or Microsoft Learn, I guess it's called, uh, which is their documentation portal thing. Actually, quite cool. Search for that man. Whatever, um, and uh, yeah, try to get familiar with, with the new .NET features and stuff like that. And I thought maybe this is what I should do here. And also got my old, some of my old auto hotkey scripts uh, uh, going and stuff like that. And it felt kind of comfy for a while there, but then, you know, the updates, Minecraft not working. Eh. Uh, I thought about geeks. I, I actually was very close to do go that route instead of Nix. Um, Geeks is a much more polished version of Nix in a way. It, 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 they rewrote Nix in Guile, which is a, a full language, so to speak. It's not the, like Nix, <laughs> the Nix language, it's created by the Nix uh, guy. And it's very, yeah, there are, they have some complaints about that. Uh, even among the Nix community, they realize that, um, yeah, it, mm, 
there are some issues with this weird language we have created here, but now everything is built with that, so I guess that's what what we are doing. Geeks guys instead, 10 years after Nix was released in 2013, uh, this was presented, the first version of Geeks, which was more or less a rewrite in Guile, which is uh, GNU's scheme dialect, and scheme is a lisp variant, you could uh, I, I think is the correct lingo. It, it's like Lisp, but it's like it's a real language, and and it's a it's a good good um, language. Guile and Scheme are 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 they are good. They are really good. You see, it's it's Lisp. Uh, so so Geeks is completely written in that. Nix is also it's also. Um, Large parts of it is written in, in C++, like the, the backend or like the daemon itself, the Nix daemon itself is written in C++. Here I think they, they try to write everything in, in Guile. And um, Nix also uses systemd, and it, systemd is kind of um, very, mm, 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 how do you say it? In, it, it's very much a part of Nix, it's almost difficult to, to to, to use a different init system usually is you know um, geeks uh, they have they use gnu's uh, shepherd which uh, might be kind of a turn off for some people but i think it, it's a good idea and i also even i who like you know i i kind of like system d i really do i think it's a good system a good init system and a good yeah, you can do some more stuff, uh, but I think it's good. It works fine. It shouldn't work as well as it does, but it does. It works great. It works really well, and I don't think the other Linux init systems compete. Even if I haven't tried them, I I have a feeling that System D is is actually very good. And people who know much more than me about like system administration and and. Uh, um, init systems and whatever more and more people are now uh, saying yeah yeah actually systemd it, 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 it is good <laughs> whatever I think systemd is good but it felt kind of awkward in Nix it didn't feel uh, it, it felt messy uh, it was like you, it felt like you were doing constant like dances around this systemd thing um, yeah, it's quite easy to explain why, because Nix install every packages in a flat directory with super strange file paths. Systemd is extremely strict about file paths. That's all I'm gonna say about it. But Systemd is extremely strict about where uh, the, the executables are installed. It's hard coded into system D that the executables it can start must be either in bin or USR bin or S bin and USR S bin if you run it uh, as root. They cannot be anywhere else. The, that's it's hard coded in system D. You cannot change those values even with environment val variables. Um, and that's one. Thing that I believe makes systemd good and it's also one thing that makes people really hate systemd those who understand what that does because it, it really makes it tricky to do hacky things with systemd and that is what systemd is all about they don't want people to do hacky things in the init system because the init system shouldn't be hacky the init system should be stable <laughs> and not have a bunch of weird shell scripts and stuff in it even you know i also like shell scripts you know that and i love dirt hack shell scripts but i can also understand that it is probably a good idea that i cannot just inject my stupid shell scripts into the init uh, uh, system <laughs> how i want that even if i sometimes just would like to do that it's probably good that i can not even can do that with systemd whatever that got a long rant about that um but even if i like systemd i like nix it doesn't feel like they jam that well together and 
while here on Geeks they use uh, GNU Shepherd, which is a much younger uh, init system. And I think it's only used here in Geeks, to be honest. But that is also written in Guile, and it jams extremely well with Geeks. And, and the init system, in a way, feels more important with these distributions. I don't want to go too deep in this rabbit hole what they really are you know you maybe you know maybe you don't but the init system feels more important here and that it, that it jams that it jams with the rest of the configuration uh, and having the init system even if it isn't as good in quotation mark even if it isn't as potent as system d it's probably much better to have it written in the same language, configured like tailor suited for the, the geeks environment. And they will all, it will also get better. I actually talked to one of the uh, Shepherd maintainers because I, I, I asked them, okay, so there is no, no way for me to install system D. I kind of wanted my system D user environment. So I was asking asking them if I could just install that on top of the shepherd or something, but they were like, no, you, you, you really don't want to do that. And apparently uh, they had like a <laughs> April Fool's joke about uh, someone creating system D for geeks. I, I don't know. I have actually not looked it up. Maybe we can find it. April 8th. Yeah, whatever. There, w there was an April Fools a couple of years ago where, <laughs> where they made System D work on on geeks. So that's how much they care for that. Um, you simply you you use uh, Shepherd, and it makes a lot of sense here. And it's also it, it's also so weird because Nix seems to do everything their own way. They even make their own language, but for some reason they went all in on System D. It is a whatever, whatever. Let's not delve too much on this. But I never tried Geeks. The reason being, it is a GNU operating system using the Libre Linux kernel, meaning uh, no proprietary drivers in the kernel, meaning <laughs> not so good hardware support. Um, there are. It, it is quite easy to install it with a normal. Linux kernel. It doesn't really matter that much for the distribution here. And there are good guides on how to do it. Even if it's very not supported here, they never mention it anywhere uh, on, on the Geeks page that you can actually get a non-Libre Linux kernel, but it is easy to do that. Uh, but still, they are also hardcore GNU uh, free software with uh, package repositories here. And it, it, it is uh, kind of a meme that they don't even support Firefox in the official repositories because they don't meet the, the free software uh, uh, requirements. So, so that's how hardcore the, the it, it's very different, as, as you can imagine, from how Nix is because they, they allow everything in their packages you can find sublime you can find vivaldi you can find lots of proprietary software uh, but that was also something i realized well from the short time i was using this that that is also one of the major problems with nixos that it have been too liberal uh, in their uh, in, in their package uh, repositories and you know, once a package gets in, it's it, it's di more difficult to, to pull something out. You got lots of people depending on it all of a sudden, you know. And Nix is is uh, very much uh, suited for for like server workloads and stuff like that, where yeah, you know, it's stuff that people depend on that they just don't want it. It's not that easy to remove a package once it's there. That's what I'm trying to say. And when you have the largest package repository by far, it's like, it, I think it's five times as large as, as Arch. I think Arch is like 10,000 packages. And Nix doesn't have as many users as Arch Linux. I'm quite sure of that. Uh, but they have so many packages and that kind of comes with some issues. Let's, let's just leave it there. Um, but did I mention this? That the reason here is the reason I stopped using Nix was that I couldn't get 
XFC 4.17 working, so I installed Windows. I know, that sentence does, doesn't make any sense, but that's what happened. But now I realize no Windows, no go. So let's try SUSE, I looked it up, I can get XFC 4.17 there. You might also have the question in your head, but, but Bud, you used Arch Linux, you have been an Arch Linux user forever, you have never distro hopped, you always use Arch and you never change programs at all it seems like. What's going on? I kind of don't want to talk about it, but uh, I can summarize it. Like, I, I, I don't want to use Arch. I don't want to be an... Or, I want to use Arch, but I don't want to be an Arch user. That, that's... I, I, I actually don't want to talk more about it. It, it, it <laughs> All versions I have recorded of that uh, this rant uh, gets nasty. So, let's, let's just leave it there. And that's how it is. I think it's something that many uh, Arch users reaches that <laughs> insight that I don't want to be part of this. Let's, let's end the, that thought there. <clears throat> Tumbleweed OpenSUSE seems to be quite similar to Arch in, when it, in regards to like software availability, rolling release and stuff like that. It, it will be interesting to try this out. I have never used uh, SUSE, I believe. SUSE is a weird company. It's a German company, but it's owned by a strange uh, Swedish uh, investment organization. It's a, or it's a global, this is not a Swedish company, but their headquarters is in Sweden. Uh, they actually bought uh, SUSE for here, 2018, two and a half billion dollars. Uh, and yeah, all of this stuff is a bit, I, I get a weird feeling from it. I, I, I don't know, but um, it will be interesting to try this out. I've also uh, uh, considered uh, BSD and I, I, I really want to try that out. I kind of want to try uh, Geeks out. I want to try BSD out. But I think I will do this now. I, I actually just decided this uh, while recording this video that because this is what it all cycles back to is this stupid XFCE release cycle not releasing the stable releases. It takes them like two years. I think I have hopes that they will make the 4.18 release like maybe maybe this winter. When they do that, it will also be available in, in Geeks and uh, FreeBSD and OpenBSD and stuff like that. When they do that, then I think I will uh, make the next jump. But now I jump to SUSE and then I think I will stay there till XFCE has uh, updated. Or maybe I stay there forever. But I have promised myself not to go back to Arch. And I don't think I will go back to Nix either. Um, and yeah, Nix and, and BSDs, I want to wait for uh, XFCE 4.17, simple as that. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing. I never wanted to do this, but things happened and I don't want to be an Arch user anymore. And so I have to do this. Um, and it's, you know, it's all, all silly, silly. What does that matter? What does it matter if you have to use 4.16? Just use the distribution you want to use. The thing is, I want to use Arch. I want to use Arch Linux. But you can use Manjaro then. No, <laughs> no, I can't. And I cannot use Ontario because they are Arch. They have like, it, it's like, no, I'm not, uh, I'm not doing that. I'd much rather use just SUSE than in, in that case. They are non options. Arch based distros are no go. And I also don't think I, I tried I think I tried Fedora in a virtual machine. I never installed it. But it, it I, I got weird feelings immediately. I just felt no, this is not this is not my, my jam either. I think SUSE will be much more uh, my my style here. Uh, but I have this feeling that this this journey ends on, on either OpenBSD or FreeBSD. The more I think about it, the more sense it makes. 
Um, or maybe Geeks. I really, really like this. And I had such a good uh, experience with um, Geeks people. I, I spent a whole day in, the, in their IRC, <laughs> plaguing them with questions about how to install Sublime. Uh, can I install Vivaldi? Can I install Systemd? And they were cool. They were really cool about that. They were not like, oh, it wasn't like the Arch IRC, if we <laughs> to put it light. It, they were really cool, the Geeks guys. And and I also the stuff I've seen from Geeks, I have read a lot of, of, of stuff about them. Um, there was uh, actually this paper, God damn it, now I don't know, uh, Secure Toolchain. Geeks. The, the, this is quite interesting. Mm, mm, mm. There it is. Building a secure software supply chain with new geeks. This is like a research uh, paper. No, I don't agree. I don't want to join. By Ludovic Cortez. So it, it's not that long. It's like a PDF here. I don't know if you can oh, if this works here now. You might. Ah, it worked, it worked. This, it might look like a lot for, for like short attention span TikTok zoomers here, but you read this in, in like a half an hour, you know, it, 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 it's 20 pages or it, it's less because all of this is like references here. So it's about 20 pages uh, about building a secure uh, software supply chain with uh, GNU Geeks. And th this was posted everywhere uh, like a couple of weeks ago or months ago maybe on, on like lobsters and, and hacker news and stuff like that I guess I, I think I saw it on lobsters um, but they describe here like a, a full fully secure uh, way of, of supplying software uh, by using git and signed commits it, it's actually very interesting this uh, paper in my opinion I, have, I haven't thought about that stuff that much you know uh, and they th this is this paper really made me realize some some major security advantages with open source that I haven't really realized before. Uh, th this was a good read. Uh, maybe not. Or I should I should really not bash on this, uh, but but it's. I would highly recommend reading this, uh, and I think the, this is not like you will get. Um, super uh, hyped about geeks about it it's more this technique here uh, with git signed commits and that whole supply chain it, it made me uh, think about trying to e even if you don't use geeks you can use these techniques <laughs> almost sounding like a rap rap artist because everything rhymes with geeks um, you can apply these techniques presented by geeks to your software to make it more secure for <laughs> uh, it's kind of cool it's it's cool stuff it's cool stuff um, and they they are using this on on the geeks uh, repositories and it's only possible with open source so they will never uh, supply any closed source software here from the official repositories and i'm not sure if there exists any third party repositories for geeks because everyone who uses this seems to be on board with the uh, geeks philosophy. One thing worth mentioning here is that both Nixos or both Nix and Geeks can be installed on top of other distributions. So that is actually one way to get uh, unavailable software here on Geeks is that you install Nix and use the Nix package manager on Geeks to get like I don't know Sublime or whatever. Um, and I also like flat pack is not like a terrible ID either if you ha have to use like complicated uh, packages that are not available here. Um, both of these or th I think this is this 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 will be like a branch. This is not a, a meme, this is not um, this will not go away. This is not a trend, uh, these nicks and, and geeks. I think they will exist. I don't think it will replace 
all distributions but this will be this is a new branch of of linux distributions uh, and they 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 solve some some difficult issues and that are it it's kind of the same issues that they try to solve with uh, snap snap pack and flat flat pack and that stuff but this is much more elegant in in, in, in my opinion um, it's kind of interesting I'm glad I I, I really delved into this uh, and tried Nix uh, and the thing is if you go Nix you will understand what Geeks is and if you do this you will understand what Nix is don't worry about that uh, they are very similar Geeks is, is uh, like completely based on, on Nix they just wrote it in a different language but then it is also a different thing but whatever cool stuff but no XFCE 4.17 so I go with SUSE for now and I think I end this video here I'm distro hopping I'm I'm on Lin I'm, <laughs> I'm on Windows I'm on Windows how weird isn't that but uh, yeah it's almost midnight now but whatever I'm, I'm gonna install OpenSUSE right now because I kind of want to play Minecraft um, so who knows what we do in the next video. I guess it could be a good idea to do the system D because if I install SUSE now I will set up system D again and do that stuff. So that will be top of mind. It kind of is already because I got it working on, on Nix. Uh, and it was a little tricky to get it working as I had it on Arch on Nix, but it will be super easy on SUSE and any other distribution. Whatever. See you in the next video. Have a great day. Don't use Arch. Bye.